Hello there, my fellow Achilles fanboys in space, and welcome to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today we shall cover a chapter with a rich mix of Roman and Greek themes. While most Ultramarine successors do have a bit of Roman theme to them, I don't think I've seen a chapter mix these two themes like the Myrmidons do. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us thus learn some things about them, shall we? The origins of the Myrmidons, like many chapters of the Astartes, were forged in fire and blood. The chapter was created during the Sixth Founding, which occurred sometime in the latter centuries of M33. This was a tumultuous period marked by uprisings, extreme warp activity, and demonic incursions throughout the galaxy. The event more than likely took place in the wake of the so-called Year of Ghosts, in 831 M33. In their wisdom, the High Lords of Terra would authorize the raising of a new founding of Astartes, to help bring stability and law back to those imperiled planets. At the founding, the newly made Myrmidons chapter swore an oath to defend the realms of the Emperor from the enemies of humanity. And in over 8,000 years of history, they did not waver once. During the troubled period of their inception, the Imperium was also experiencing the War of the False Primarch a dark and bloody episode in Imperial history, now unfortunately lost to myth and purge from the official records. This event would plunge the Segmentum Pacificus into anarchy. Following the inception, the Myrmidons were one of several chapters sent into the heart of the ongoing conflict, although the details of their exploits are not recorded. Despite being immortalized as one of the Myrmidons' earliest battle honors, the chapter's own chronicles are curiously empty of any reference to that war. In the wake of the anarchy at the War of the False Primarch and its aftermath, the Hellion Sector declared its secession from the troubled Imperium. It bloodily attacked its neighbors, quickly becoming apparent that the Sector rulers had fallen to the worship of the Dark Gods. Its millions of men under arms were corrupted and given over to the darkness while its manufactoria were turned to churning forth twisted machines of war consecrated to the Dark Gods. The call to arms was eagerly answered by several bellicose and savage chapters of Astartes which possessed a warlike mien, including the Myrmidons, the Megalodons, the Void Reapers, the Blood Scorpions, and the Imperious Ravagers, these fellows being actually the genetic forebears of the Myrmidons themselves. With the arrival of this formidable space marine force, the chapters began to systematically destroy each secessionist force they encountered. But soon, the ever-widening war swelled to ravage more than 80 systems, and billions had to die in the fighting. By the dawning of M35, the Hellion Sector was reduced to little more than a waste of barren worlds and dead hive cities. The homeworld of the Myrmidons is known as Aegina Primus. It is a feral planet home to primitive ruling city-states, which have the agricultural ability and possess technology equivalent to the old Earth's Bronze Age culture. The people of Aegina Primus live without the assistance of advanced technology for the most part. The planet has little direct political or economic interference from the Imperium and only pays the lowest grade of planetary tithes. There are four continental landmasses, and they are split approximately in half by a landlocked sea. The southern continents are inhabited exclusively by the people who are descended from the planet's original settlers. They are considered primitive in nature, and the creed of the God Emperor was slowly introduced to them. Many have embraced the teachings, and while they have eschewed the opportunity to move to the civilized northern continents, nevertheless they show their fealty to the Emperor and the Imperium. A number of the Astartes are drawn from these people, and they do make tenacious warriors. They are made up of hardy stock, providing an excellent recruiting ground for the Astartes, and may yet even provide the founding regiment of the Imperial Guard. Potential Myrmidon recruits are required to attend a grand tournament in the foothills below the chapter's fortress monastery, known as Alcaios. There, the aspirants will duel to the death in the hope of being one of the few chosen to ascend the winding mountain path, all the way to the fortress of the chapter. The final few who do survive the climb may then begin the process of becoming a space marine. This process is long and deadly, 
involving many surgeries and the implanting of the typical organs required of all space marines, all grown from the genes of their primarch, Robot Gilliman. The organs work with the initiate's own body tissues, stimulating natural abilities like muscle growth, as well as granting them new abilities. The surgeries are accompanied by a rigorous routine of physical and spiritual training. That is achieved with auto-hypnotic suggestion, meditation, psychological and spiritual testing, as well as an introduction to the culture and traditions of the chapter. Only then are the survivors fully inducted into the ranks of the scouts. Unlike their genetic forebears, the Ultramarines, the Myrmidons do not adhere rigidly to the tenets laid out in the Codex Astartes. They freely interpret the words of Gilliman in accordance to the ebb and flow of battle, believing it foolish to follow the dictates to the letter just because it is written by their Primarch. Every battle which is fought against an unidentified opponent requires a warrior to identify the foe's strengths and weaknesses. Only once those are known can the strengths be avoided and the weaknesses exploited. The chapter is adept at using a variety of different approaches against a new foe in very short order. Once a particularly effective tactic is identified, it is then used for as long as it stays effective. However, if no commonly known methods provide a necessary solution, the Space Marines do not hesitate to attempt to find an alternative. Each of the Myrmidon's ten companies is organized to be fully and independently functional. To maintain that ability, all the brothers undergo constant cross-training, so they may effectively serve the role of scout, tactical, assault, or devastator as the tactical situation requires. Due to their partial crusading nature, each company is capable of maintaining sufficient resources in their armory to equip its members with all the necessary gear to fulfill any of the roles at any time. They are usually philosophically opposed to the use of covert tactics prior and during a battle. They prefer to proudly demonstrate their presence and their markings. They firmly believe that their iconography and war gear are a crucial symbol of their allegiance to the Emperor. Anything preventing the enemies from seeing their insignia is an affront to their very faith. While they have been known to use the Codex standard camouflage patterns, even these are accepted only reluctantly. Initiates are trained as scouts in keeping with the Codex standard, but even they are seldom assigned to protracted reconnaissance missions. Instead, the neophytes are usually deployed to either the main battle line or held back so they can serve as a reserve force. Like their predecessors, the Imperious Ravagers, the Remedans also prefer to use shock tactics, close quarters combat, and the brutal application of overwhelming power to annihilate the foe. Unlike other scions of Gilliman, they are not hidebound or unimaginative in their thinking, preferring to deploy in vanguard and strike formations. Their warriors are skilled, courageous, and ferocious. Although they prefer shock assault tactics, unlike the assault units of other chapters which are known for their savagery or even their outright bloodthirstiness, the Myrmidons are universally a disciplined and exacting lot. They are superlative practitioners of the sword and pistol play, their strikes perfectly timed and placed to maximum effect. Part of their success in war is due to the intense level of discipline maintained in the chapter. To a certain extent, the discipline is instilled through use of religious focus in all aspects of their lives. Obedience is second nature to these fellows. They firmly believe that their lives are dedicated to and directly guided by the God Emperor. They trust in his guidance and the knowledge that if their lives are lost, they can enter the afterlife to enjoy his eternal blessing. This level of discipline enables the chapter commanders to execute strategies which might be too risky for other imperial forces or even other chapters. Their gene set is constant with that of other chapters from the lineage of Gilliman. It is free from any contamination, reproduces in a stable fashion, and produces the full range of space marine implants. Because they are extremely active in multiple war zones, they are rigorous about harvesting and securing the progenoid glands of its brothers in a very timely fashion. Recoveries made in the field are secured upon the nearest vessel and then returned to Aegina Primus for storage at the earliest possible opportunity. This sense of obligation is largely due to the fact that the chapter has a very high attrition rate among the members. 
The Space Marines prefer to engage in the thickest portion of any battle and are almost always at war. Consequently, they do suffer a higher than usual casualty rate, which can only be compensated by a proportionally high recruitment and initiation rate. Fortunately, records indicate that the chapter is sufficiently well stocked with gene seed to accommodate even their high needs. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about this mix of Space Spartans and Space Romans, the Myrmidons, for today. A very straight to the point, no nonsense kind of chapter, and with a very appealing, in my opinion, color scheme and armor traits. I've seen a fair share of Spartan looking Space Marines since I started covering homebrews, but I think these guys actually look among the best. But that's enough from me. What about you? Did you know about the existence of the Myrmidons prior to this episode? Are they among your favorite chapters, homebrew or otherwise? Do share your thoughts or questions, if you got any, in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor protects.